Now, we need regular public briefings on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout and fewer promises about what might happen at some unknown time in the future. This is the word from Professor Alex van den Heerwe, a specialist in health economics and finance at the Witt School of Governance. He joins me now via Zoom. Thanks for your time, Prof. We appreciate it. I'm sure you might have heard what we just heard from Professor Barry Shu, but you reckon the health department's been intentionally vague about the vaccine procurement and rollout? Yes, I think that they've uh, probably got bad news. Um, and as a consequence, they're not, make, not being very clear or transparent about what our position is. Uh, we are now heading into April next week, and uh, we have no actual official rollout program. Not a single dose has been delivered in terms of a government-run rollout program. All that we've had to date is the expand, an expanded trial based on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And uh, what uh, Professor Barry Schaub has just indicated is that we will potentially have uh, some Pfizer doses uh, within the next few days, apparently. But we've also just had an announcement from Israel that the Pfizer vaccine has been shown to provide very poor results against the South African variant. And this raises now another whole issue as to are we going to deal with Pfizer the way we dealt with AstraZeneca and are we going to end up with a muddled policy going forward or do we have a clear route? And then there is a whole issue of Johnson & Johnson and South African production that is not going to be directed to South Africa, which uh, I find unbelievable. Yeah. So Professor Shub is, of course, saying that government must be cut some slack because we uh, really can't control how these vaccines are produced across the world and we can't control the delays. But what do you think about that? I mean, many people are criticizing government for being slow from the very start, which is why we're here. Yeah, I think that we, they've, they've certainly been very late to the party. And it's been unclear as to why neither a rollout plan was prepared or uh, some kind of bilateral agreements were entered into early on. It's also unclear why they've made the particular strategic choice to, um, to sort of boot AstraZeneca, the AstraZeneca vaccine into Africa or somewhere else, um, when in fact it could still potentially have an impact on severe illness. So we, we're going to have to deal with vaccines that potentially are not particularly good at preventing infection, but may be very important in protecting against severe illness. Now, I can't give a formal opinion on that. It will be up to the vaccinologists and the scientists to say whether or not, in terms of contingent planning, it makes absolute sense to still administer a vaccine that doesn't entirely prevent transmission or infection, but does prevent potentially severe illness, as to whether or not we still continue to dispense it. We're going to face that with Pfizer. We faced it with AstraZeneca. We've uh, essentially backed off and done nothing. In the, uh, as a strategic move at this point. And I think that this really worries me. It just shows that there's incredible dithering going on about our strategy. Yeah. So is it that really, though, or uh, are officials just not telling the public what's happening because they fear of giving us uh, details that, you know, is out of their hands when it comes to delivery? Because initially when we were told that we were getting uh, vaccines and we didn't know that there were going to be delays in production, right? Is that the case or are they making bad decisions overall? Well, I think that we're, we're now in a position because we're Johnny come lately to the, to the vaccine bilateral agreements that we certainly have difficulties entering the queue. Um, and, th and that will be a practical constraint at this point. So we will be getting the breadcrumbs um, and, and that's going to be a reality we have to accept. But in terms of agreements that we are entering into, we've had absolutely no detail provided. Now, apparently they are close to finalizing some agreements, but you would have heard uh, the comment about Pfizer next week. That's, there's nothing particularly public about an announcement of specifics around Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson, both of which are apparently contracts we're about to sign or deal with. And it's very unclear as to what the holdup is. But what does concern me is the comments that we're really only going to see doses available at some sort of scale at the so-called end of the second quarter. You hear this constantly, end of the second quarter and then in drips and drabs. And this implies that we're really not going to get um, any kind of vaccine at scale, any doses at scale until, uh, uh, until past mid-year.
And I think that is uh, that is a concern, and I think some people are scared of saying that publicly, and uh, very um, uh, uh, just very clearly. Yeah, and governments actually not really updating South Africans about vaccine procurement, right? I can tell you that I've been trying to get the health ministry on for weeks now about this, and we simply don't get a response for interviews. And I'm, I'm hearing that there are bureaucratic delays in finalizing the agreements that are there, um, with all sorts of interference occurring from various quarters. Uh, and therefore, uh, so it appears as though other agendas are kind of coming into completion of these arrangements and deals, which is quite problematic. So uh, I think that we, we really do need to have an update. And in my view, we need to have high level intervention in this process over, over the head of the Minister of Health to get this process moving. But I, I think that even if we've got bad news, we need to know. Uh, it, it really is not helpful to be kept in the dark. High level of intervention from whom? Because the president and the health minister have told South Africans the same thing. They're on the same page. So who else could possibly you know, intervene in this matter? Well, the question is what the specifics of the bottlenecks are in the, in the process. And I heard there are a few. I mean, so there are things that are supposed to be happening and in the pipeline. But uh, the, uh, the processes are not being completed and therefore nobody is making any kind of announcement. So the question is really whether those bottlenecks need to be addressed at a very senior level in government and to stop what I would regard as messing around at the, at the level of the health ministry. They need to sort themselves out and focus on the public interest in South Africa and not on some other agenda or interest. And that's where I say intervention from a higher level is required to make sure that whatever bureaucratic bungling or interference is occurring to finalize any agreements and processes need to be resolved urgently. And, uh, and, and then we need to be put in, uh, put in the picture as, uh, as a country as to where we stand and what we can expect and what the risks are going forward. Yeah, you and I spoke about this last week, the fact that Johnson & Johnson is producing vaccines in South Africa for export, and we're not getting any of those. Uh, has government been smart at all when it comes to procurement, given that? Because I don't want to say they haven't been smart. I'm asking you the question. So, the, so, so firstly, my concern with the rollout of the um, Aspen Pharmacare's uh, production of Johnson & Johnson is that they've effectively focused on a commercial strategy to maximize profits. And the profit maximization strategy means selling to the highest bidder first and then, then getting to so-called developing countries. And they're using developing country production facilities in order to maximize the margins on that strategy. So I would want complete transparency in the case where we've got a domestic production facility in which we are back of the queue, which to me is unbelievable. And uh, for the South African government to have stood on the sidelines while this was there is, uh, is, is, makes no sense. And we can see what Europe is, for instance, doing around the AstraZeneca vaccine and various others is that they're actually threatening to withhold those exports. Um, until they get a better, a better deal and a better arrangement. So they go into negotiation. Well, South Africa has done nothing. It's letting this commercial strategy just run. So we do need to have an update on exactly what the domestic production of Johnson & Johnson means for South Africa. And what that means is that if it's produced in South Africa, we should be front of the queue, not the United States and Europe. Yeah, makes sense, right? But uh, apparently that's not how it's done. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Appreciate it.